In this project we're going to look at how we can create artistic borders for our images. Now as well as the image that I'm going to be working on, I've got some resources here. I've scanned some paper on my flatbed scanner to get this lovely paper texture. I've also got a, a, a grain uh, file that we can emulate film grain with and I've also got my creative border that I'm going to be using today. Okay, so let's come back to our host image and uh, we're going to start uh, by um, adding uh, this creative border. I've got all of the images available in the project bin as we can see here. And in order to just to add this uh, creative border to my image, all I need to do is click and drag that border into the image preview here. And now we've got that. It's a little bit smaller than the image I'm working with, so I'll just need to adjust the scale of this creative border. Okay, so let's just uh, collapse this uh, project bin. And I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut for the free transform command. On a Macintosh, that's Command T. On a PC, that's Control T. And that brings up the free transform bounding box. Just going to need to uncheck the constraint proportions just in case these are different aspect ratios here. Now I'm just going to come up to the uh, corner handle and then drag it to the corner of this image. They will snap into place uh, because the, uh, there's a slight uh, magnetic effect on these uh, edges that we're working with. And I'll just click and drag down to the uh, lower left there. And now that I'm happy that uh, the two files are the same size, I'm just going to commit that scaling. Okay, now we've got the border. Uh, it's a very quick uh, operation in order to um, uh, to knock out uh, that image. We're just using the uh, the screen blend mode here, so we're coming down from normal uh, down to screen, and very quickly we're seeing that uh, as black is the neutral color in the screen blend mode, uh, our image from uh, the layer below automatically appears, and we've got all of the subtlety of these lovely uh, beautiful edges that we've got working here. Okay, now if I want to emulate that uh, film grain effect, I'm going to bring in uh, my next uh, image. So I'll return to the project bin and pick up my uh, grain image and drag that into the project file as well and let go. Okay, and again we'll need to scale this. I'll just collapse the project bin by double clicking uh, Command T on a Mac or Control T on a PC to access that free transform. Again, I'll need to uncheck that constraint proportions and then just resize this uh, to fit the host file. And again, we can commit that um, to size. Okay, now that we've um, got that uh, grain file the same size, I'm going to choose another blend mode now. And uh, the blend mode I'm going to be using is the overlay blend mode. Now, if you want a slightly more subtle uh, effect, then you can try the soft light, and that gives you a little bit more uh, subtlety to this grain. Alternatively, you can play with dropping the opacity uh, of these um, of this grain file if the grain is a little bit too heavy. Okay, so now we've got the uh, the grain in. I just want to uh, play around and see what other effects we can uh, get with this image. Uh, if we decided we didn't want a, a white border, we wanted a black border instead, then uh, I can show you how we can achieve that. I'm just coming up to my border layer here, and I'm going to uh, right click and choose duplicate layer. And I'll just accept the default name there. Okay, now all I need to do in order to create this effect is to invert this layer. And on the Macintosh, that's Command I. On a PC, that's Control I to invert this layer. And we're going to switch the blend mode from screen to multiply. Okay, and there we have a black version of the uh, of the border that we've created. Now you can switch off the uh, the border underneath, but uh, we're losing a little bit of the subtlety of those um, lovely edges here. So I'm just going to switch that uh, border back on. Okay, let's take a look at uh, how we can uh, get some other effects here. I want to introduce uh, a paper texture uh, to this file. So I'm just going to switch off the, the black border as I'm preferring the white for this particular project. And we'll come back to the uh, project bin to pick up uh, my last file that we've got working here. And it's the paper texture file. So again, just click and drag into the preview window uh, to add this to the file. And again, double click to collapse the project bin. And again, the keyboard shortcut for free transform, Command T on a Mac or Control T on a PC. And again, to uncheck the constraint proportions. And then click and drag this to fit uh, the host file. 
and again once that's achieved we just hit the uh, commit uh, current operation check there and uh, now we have this layer the same size as the host image now this paper texture is going to go at the uh, base of the layer stack but at the moment uh, the fact that the background layer is locked is going to prevent us uh, from putting the paper texture in this position so I'm just going to click and drag that little lock icon uh, to the trash can in the layers panel and that uh, unlocks the layer and this allows me to click uh, on the paper texture to select it and then drag it to the base of the layers panel here Okay, so um, the way we can uh, pick up that uh, texture is simply to um, select the image layer and then put that into the multiply blend mode and uh, this allows us to pick up this paper texture. Now at the moment we're only picking it up uh, on the image itself and I want to pick it up on uh, the border as well. Let's just uh, put this uh, back into normal mode and let's see how we can pick up this border and put it onto a layer mask on the actual image layer itself. And the way we're going to do that is select the border layer and then from the select menu choose all and then from the edit menu choose copy. And that copies the pixels of this border layer into the clipboard. We're now going to select the, uh, the image layer and we're going to add a layer mask. I'm going to view the contents of this layer mask by holding down the Alt key on a PC, the Option key on a Mac, and at the moment there's no pixels in there, but we're going to come into Edit and then choose Paste to paste that border file into this image. And then from the Select menu, we'll just choose Deselect to lose that active selection. Now this um, um, mask at the moment is working the wrong way uh, around, it's knocking out the image uh, rather than the edge. So I'm just going to invert this layer mask, uh, Command I on a Mac or Control I on a PC inverts that layer mask. Now we're viewing the contents of the layer mask still, so if we want to view the image as well as this mask, we're going to have to click on the layer thumbnail to return to, return to that normal view. Okay, now if I um, put that uh, blend mode uh, back to multiply as we did earlier, we're going to see that um, we've got um, uh, the texture over here, but at the moment this uh, border texture on the top is actually concealing the paper from around the edge. So we're just going to have to switch the visibility of that border off now that we've transferred it to this mask. So we'll just click on that visibility icon and now we have the uh, paper texture around the edge and also through the image. Now the whole thing is just looking a little bit darker, so I'm just going to put in a, a couple of adjustments to fine tune the color and tonality of this finished version. So we're going to click on the, uh, the paper texture layer, and I'm going to come in and select uh, a brightness contrast adjustment layer. And uh, we can adjust the, uh, the brightness uh, of, the, um, of the paper there. And because the image is in um, um, the multiply blend mode, we're also lightening the image as well, even though the, uh, the adjustment layer is underneath the image layer there. And if I wanted to um, adjust the brightness of the image by itself, then we can just uh, click on the image layer and come in with another uh, brightness uh, contrast adjustment. And if I want to adjust the image and not the, uh, the paper around the edge, then I need to uh, clip um, this. Um, to the layer underneath so that now when I adjust the brightness only the central image um, is adjusted and not the um, not the paper surround there. Okay so now we've got um, an effect that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm liking very much. I probably just want to desaturate a little. I'm going to desaturate all of the file both the paper and the image itself just to create that faded look so I'm going to come up to a hue saturation adjustment and just lower that saturation slightly. Okay, and uh, this uh, basically uh, completes this project. Um, obviously, there's many options here. We can uh, play with the uh, the borders. Here we can knock out that edge. We can switch to a black edge, but the paper texture. We've got many little combinations that we can play with uh, um, in order to create the uh, desired effect that we're looking for.